Coming up on the show, SM2 had a chance to catch up with Brandon Presley, who is running for governor of Mississippi. More on this at the top of the show. Also, we welcome a new member into the Hattiesburg Zoo family. All of this and more on SMTV. SMTV News for Wednesday, November 1st starts now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello USM and thank you for tuning in for another edition of SMTV. I'm Larissa Lee and I'm Jeterica Wilson and here's our top news story for tonight. This November, Mississippi will vote for its next governor. One of the candidates, Democrat Brandon Presley, made a visit to campus and even answered a few of our questions. Reporter Simeon Gates has the full story. Brandon Presley has a real chance of becoming Mississippi's next governor. Here is what prospective voters should know. Presley visited the University of Southern Mississippi on Monday, October 24th. The event was open to the public and hosted by USM's College Democrats. He gave a speech outlining his plans for the state and then opened the floor to audience questions. Despite being a Democrat in a firmly Republican state, many are predicting this will be a tight race. Presley is socially conservative. Expanding Medicaid and fighting corruption are his top priorities. This is in contrast with his rival, incumbent Governor Tate Reeves, who was criticized for blocking Medicaid expansion and for his response to the welfare scandal. Reeves is a Republican. SM2 got to ask Presley about his plans for college students. We have got to take every opportunity to make the financial aid system available to every child in Mississippi so that they can get a quality education. We need to be working with counties, working with community colleges and universities to make sure we keep uh, those fees and those charges of tuition as reasonable as possible. Allison Gonzalez, president of USM College Democrats, says she wants young voters to be more invested in local politics. These are the people that are making decisions directly on where you live, the funding, and where state allocation is going. So self-educating is really important, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Election Day is November 7, 2023. Check the Mississippi Secretary of State's website for all information related to voting. Simeon Gates, SM2 News. The Hattiesburg Zoo has had a lot going on lately with the arrival of a few new friends. The Hattiesburg Zoo has had a lot of new ex and exciting things to share with the community. The zoo is getting ready for a long month of fun with the arrival of a few new faces at the zoo. The zoo is happy to welcome its very new Malayan tiger to the zoo community. Mr. Bunya is a 12-year-old Malayan tiger who made his grand appearance at the zoo earlier this year. The zoo was in mourning after the passing of their Samaritan tiger, Mr. Kemplin. He passed away due to age-related issues. Although the zoo welcomes a new tiger to their family, they said Kemplin will always be remembered and loved. Zoo curator Kristen Moore tells us more about Mr. Bunya. The Bunya was part of a breeding program, but he was not a successful breeder, and so they needed to move him to a facility that could just house a tiger for an exhibit purpose. That is what we are here for. Um, so he is a little bit older. He is 12. They live to, they can live to be about 20. So he will live out the rest of his life here. We like to call it his retirement home. For more information on the Hattiesburg Zoo and how they help endangered species stay safe, follow them on their social media pages or visit their website at www.hattiesburgzoo.com and stay tuned for more species and events at the local Hattiesburg Zoo. On Friday, Smack hosted the Fright Fest at Spirit Park. Halloween was in the air. Students came out to enjoy the festivities at the event. There were hammer throws, liquid nitrogen marshmallows, a DJ to keep them dancing, and so much more. Many of the students state that this was a great start to their Halloween weekend. 
very happy with the outcome of the Fright Fest. I feel like the participation was great. A lot of our community came out to support, so I would say it's a 10 out of 10. Make sure you don't miss out on the next event they have. Coming up after the break, we'll give the latest news on what's happening around the Pound Belt and the nation with our weekly Flash News Briefing. Stay tuned for news and more. Here's a quick look at your USM traffic cam on Hardy Street, provided by MDOT. It's important to get a flu shot each and every year because flu viruses are constantly changing and immunity from the vaccine decreases over time. Flu vaccines are updated annually to work against that year's viruses. The best time to get your shot is in the fall, but getting it later can still help. Getting a flu shot lowers your risk of getting sick. And if you do happen to get flu, it's likely to be less severe. Are you looking for more in this world? Are you driven by purpose? Then we are looking for you. The big hearted, the bold, the change makers. We are the Peace Corps. With volunteers in more than 60 countries, we join hands with communities, live together, work together, transform lives and serve boldly together. Are you ready to go the distance to make a difference? Then we have a place where you belong. Join. I am studying to be a NICU nurse to give back that same care that I received. I was born at 26 weeks and was in the NICU for 89 days. Having a support system like March of Dimes is just, it's needed, it's necessary. Improving maternal and infant health is as important today as it was then. Join me in making a difference in the lives of families everywhere. Adding your own flavor to fashion comes with age. Okay, Dad, look at you. Forgetting how to add doesn't. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's. Some things come with age, some others. Welcome back. Here's your Flash News Briefing. Local news, Forest County Sheriff's Office is investigating a shooting at a Wiggins Club party that left one dead and three injured. The victim was identified as 21-year-old Pearl River Community College student Jade Rhodes. The County Sheriff's Office is trying to obtain search warrants to get more information in the investigation. Sheriff Charlie Sims is asking the public to send in any tips or information about the case to call. Investigations at 601 544 800 or Metro Crime Stoppers at 601-582-STOP. In state news, Mississippi is currently seeing a decrease in overdose deaths after years of continuously record high rates. According to the Mississippi Prescription Monitoring Program, there was an 8.7 decrease in drug overdose deaths in 2003 compared to the previous year. This decrease comes after increasing record-breaking overdose death rates in the state, 586 total in 2020 and 788 total in 2021. The Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics says legislative changes that allowed for easier access to the to the opioid reversal drug naloxone, more commonly referred to by its brand name, Narcon, has played a major part in the dropping death rates. In national news, the perpetrator of the Lewiston, Maine shooting that left 18 dead and 13 injured last week has been found dead in the Androscroggin River. After a two-day manhunt for the shooter, Robert Card, Police were called to the scene 10 miles from Lewiston, where they discovered him dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound last Friday. This comes after the police had been warned about Card six weeks prior to the shooting, when he threatened to carry out a shooting spree and had been acting increasingly erratic. No law enforcement officials ever made contact with him. The citizens of Maine continue to mourn those lost 
and a candlelight vigil was held for the victims last weekend. Larissa, it seems to be getting a little cold outside, huh? I know, and I am <laughs> so looking forward for Thanksgiving. Me too. I'm so excited. Zion, why don't you tell us how the weather is looking for the Pine Belt? Hi Hattiesburg, I'm Zion Cochran, here for yet another week bringing you your Hub City weather. Without further ado, it's time to jump right into your SMTV forecast for the week. We've got a lot to go over, so let's get right into it. Today's forecast will bring you a high of 58 degrees and a low of 30, so make sure to wear your extra layers. There's a 0% chance of rain, so you will not be needing any umbrella, Southern Miss. Heading into your 5-day forecast, Thursday will be sunny with a high of 66 degrees and a low of 34 with a 0% chance of rain. It will be getting a little warmer Friday as we see the temperatures rise to 71 degrees with a low of 42 with a 1% chance of rain. As far as the weekend goes, we'll have quite the dramatic change in temperature. Saturday will have a high coming in at 76 degrees and the low being at a crisp 46. Sunday looks to be a little warmer, making the high rise to 79 degrees and the low being 53 degrees. Here's a more in-depth look at your rain chances for the next seven days. You won't have to worry about any rain this week, as the rain chances range from about 0 to 12 percent. Save your umbrellas for next Tuesday, where it sits at a 24 percent chance of rain. I'm Zion Cochran, and this has been your weather forecast for Hattiesburg. Stay tuned for more weather updates powered by SMTV, powered by SM2 Media. When you need to know what weather happens in the Pine Belt area, SMTV has you covered. Okay, so Larissa, this weather outside is up and down, but when mm -hmm. it's down, it makes me happy. I've had to whip out some of my jackets way deep in my closet, my winter me coat. Too. <laughs> me too, me too. I literally brought all my coats back from home and brought them up here to school because you never know, you might need it. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't go anywhere. We still have more left in the show, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. SMTV will be right back. Ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kid. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. of 4th Street Sports. I'm sports reporter Amari Anderson and I will be giving you the scoop on all things Eagle Sports this week. 
The Golden Eagles are now 1-7 after taking a devastating loss to Appalachian State on Saturday. The game ended with a score of 38-48, and the Golden Eagles are now bowl ineligible and will not have any postseason play. The Golden Eagles will be back in action this Saturday at home as they host the University of Louisiana Monroe for a conference matchup on November 4th at 3 p.m. Heading over onto the volleyball side of things, the Lady Eagles are now 10 and 13 after sweeping Georgia State this past weekend in Atlanta. Mia Wesley will also reach 1,500 career kills in the sweep against Georgia State. You can catch the Lady Eagles in action on Thursday, November the 2nd at 6 p.m. where they will take on the 6-6 Louisiana Raging Cajuns for a conference showdown. To kick things over to soccer, the Lady Eagles are now 6-9-3 after a loss to Georgia State in the Sun Belt Tournament, which means the soccer season is over. We wish better luck to the Golden Eagles next season. Men's basketball has only a few more days before they officially kick off the season as they, take, as they took on Mississippi State for an exhibition match this past Sunday in a Ball for Charity event where they raised thousands to help the victims of the tornado that hit the Delta this past spring. The men will be back in action officially on November the 6th where they will take on William Carey. And now the much anticipated Player of the Week announcement is back. This week's winner goes to Frank Gore Jr. who had 24 attempts, 20, 247 yards and two touchdowns against Appalachian State. I am Amari Anderson and this has been your 4th Street Sports for the week powered by SM2 Media. If you want to stay in the game, visit sm2media.com or catch 4 Streets in the student prints on 4 Street Sports on WSM 88.5 FM every Monday at 5 p.m. and every week on SMTV. I'm signing off. Now on to our very own Amaya Norman for her very special Golden Eagle Spotlight. Until next time, peace. Welcome back to a new episode of Go to Eagle Spotlight. I am your host, Amaya Norman, and on today's episode, as you can see, we are in a different setting with the entrepreneur and business owner of the Bougie Boss pop up market, Danielle Terrell. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Good, good. Okay, we're going to start off asking you um, what inspired the, um, your business and the meaning behind it. So I started off as a ladies clothing boutique out of my house, um, going to pop-up shops and expos to um, grow my clientele. Um, after about three years of being, uh, two or three years with being in the home, going to pop-up stores, um, I started just exploring how to do mm -hmm. it, how to create a pop-up shop, and um, that brought us here in the mall. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, so what also inspired your clothing versatility? Well, so I, my career path is social work, and so I've um, done social work since, ooh, a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but, so I, I like to have professional things. I'm also a praise and worship leader, so I like to have things for church. Um, and then mm -hmm. I like to travel, so I like to have things for travel. Um, and when I came here in the mall, I learned that a lot of people like to party. Oh, yeah. Things, <laughs> traveling, hanging out, church, um, work attire. Um, and so I just incorporated all of that into my store. Mm -hmm. So do you have any websites or vlogs that you use to advertise your business? So I have a website, which is bearbougie.com. That's for my boutique. I also have <laughs> a website for the pop-up side of it, which is thebougieboss.org. Um, I use Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Google. Those are the main ones that I use. Mm, okay. I'm not a blogger. Yeah. Blogger. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. What are your best sellers? Oh, the lounge sets, um, chill sets, mm -hmm. comfy sets, anything that's got a top and a bottom to go with it. Something that people don't really have to put much thought into it. Um, but this, this would be matching top, matching bottom, hollow slit. 
Mm. Just okay. <laughs> so what is your favorite out of your your bitch um your boozy well, pop up market? Everything. <laughs> um, I don't think I can say I have one favorite out of the other. Like I always tell people, I tell the piece, you tell the story. Mm -hmm. So just depending on what day of the week it is, where I'm going, um, you know, how you feel is how you behave. And so mm -hmm. I don't think I have one signature piece that I like. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your your journey as an entrepreneur, the pros and the cons mm. of just starting a boutique. Um, oh, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> it has not been easy, but it's been fun. Um, mm -hmm. I have worked management positions most of my life. Um, I always worked up to management positions. So I learned a lot about time management and money management. Um, so that kind of prepared me, I guess, for when the Lord said, hey, you going to open up a boutique? And I was like, no, nah, not me. Mm -hmm. um, but um, people always say your family's not going to support you. My family are one of my biggest supporters. Yeah. Um, it's just, I mean, it, it's been crazy how fast it went. But, you know, I learned the importance of, like, business startup. I paid for EIN. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't, when I first started in 18, I didn't realize EINs are free. Yeah. And so some of my journey has been, especially with the pop up shop, to be able to share with people like some of the ins and outs mm -hmm. so that some of the struggles that I had, they don't have. Mm -hmm. Some of the um, issues that I ran into, they don't necessarily run into it. Now, every business is different and unique. Um, there were things that I struggled with on the um, boutique side that weren't that big of a struggle on the pop up market side. And this is the crazy thing. I don't own just one business. I own four mm -hmm. <laughs> rental. Um, and I am a licensed clinical social worker. Mm -hmm. So I also do mental health in addition to that. You can call me the retail therapist. Mm -hmm. But um, each business brings about a different struggle. Mm -hmm. um, consistency. I learned how important it is to be consistent. Um, competitive. I don't look at my um, counterparts as competitive. I look at them as, um, you know, collaborators you know yes. they bring so much to the table here at the pop-up market um, I've made good friends great friends who come in and we push each other mm -hmm. so this has been a it's been a good journey not mm -hmm. the easiest journey but yeah hey. so do you have any advice out there to those that want to own their boutique um, and just be their own boss as well <laughs> know what you're getting into but to consistency I'll tell anybody that's the biggest thing consistency even when you don't see like um, I can post 17 things today and I might not um, sell one thing but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna post tomorrow mm -hmm. um, so just stay consistent and to like I'm not trying to I always say you know very bougie boutique often imitate it never duplicate it mm -hmm. I'm not trying to um, duplicate anything that someone else is doing you know bring your own twist your own feel how you take your pictures how you connect with people um what you sell mm -hmm. just because it sells great for me doesn't mean if you open a boutique that same stuff's gonna yeah. sell for you mm -hmm. and tell us your location and time for your business <laughs> so we are currently and hopefully this will be our last mall move but mm -hmm. um because we've moved four times if you guys have followed us um, but we are in the old Hollister unit, which is on the um, side with Ulta Beauty, but right beside Journey's Kids. We're only open Thursday through Sunday. Our hours Thursday through Saturday are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And, of course, on Sunday from 12 to 6. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mrs. Terrell, and thank you for giving us your time and us coming to your business. And always remember, Golden Eagles, to the top. To the top. <laughs>
it going, my loves? My name is Dondre Burris, and I'm here with a community calendar where we gather information from around campus and within the community near you in Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg Library Children's Department are inviting you to stop by for a morning of reading and activities on Saturday, November 4th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Activities will include celebrity readers, refreshments, free books while supplies last, and more. Come out to channel your inner bookworm. On November 4th, Connection Dance Club and Studio and South Mississippi Ballet Theaters invites you to attend a Sawyer Ray Fabuluse Ballroom Dance Fundraiser from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. Location will be 5296 Highway 11 in the South Mississippi Ballet Theater. Coming up November, November 8th, SMAC will hold their event SMAC Presents at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Joe Paul Student Theater. What is playing is to be announced. However, if you missed this event at the beginning of the semester, now's the opportunity to participate and enjoy. A supply drive for USM Eagle's Nest Food Pantry is happening now until November 10th. You can drop off items to the Office of Undergraduate Scholarships located in Kennard Washington Hall, room 200, or you can stop by Hattiesburg Hall where a donation box is located on the first floor. Items they are looking for include toilet paper, powdered detergent, rice, mac and cheese, beans, soup, breakfast bars, and canned vegetables. Please feel free to come out and then donate. If you have an event you would like for us to promote, send it to sm2news at usm.edu. Be sure to check out Southern Miss today, Monday through Thursday at noon on WUSM 88.5. Also, pick up the latest edition of the student prints around campus and make sure to keep tuning in to SMTV. Visit our website at sm2media.com to keep up with all of our news. I am Dundra Burris and this has been your community calendar. So what you doing for Thanksgiving? Well, my family's coming down and we're going to eat a bunch of food. Okay. And I'm so excited. My stomach is growing just thinking about it. What about you? No, nah, I'm going home for the Ooh, holidays. Okay. We make Thanksgiving a big deal at mm -hmm. our house. So I'm just ready to see my family for real and eat some cake. Some pound I cake. heard that. You mm -hmm. had pound cake before? Yeah. It's delicious. Okay, yeah. That's what I'm wearing for. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media pages, like and follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Miss Student Media. If you would like to submit a news tip, email us at sm2news at usm.edu. Also, if you would like to advertise with SM2 Media, please reach out to Josh Wilson at joshua.wilson at usm.edu. You can find all of these stories and more on our website, sm2media.com. Well, that's it for SMTV. Thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Southern Miss to, to the, the top. top. facing hunger. Many are forced to choose between food and other necessities. I'm stuck between paying for medications or paying for food. John from Maine. After rent and power, I can get groceries. It's sad to say food comes last. Anna from Texas. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. I thought pantries were for less fortunate people, but anybody could be less fortunate in a day or even a second. Claire from Virginia. Now I can provide food for my family again. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. Liam from Ohio. No one should have to worry where their next meal will come from. Together, 
We can end hunger. Learn more at feedingamerica.org.